So example 6 will start the same way. We need to find the first derivative of g of x, which in this case will be negative 4x cubed plus 48x squared minus 16. Then we need to find the derivative of the first derivative to get the second derivative, which will give us negative 12x squared plus 96x. So again, we'll take this derivative, set it equal to 0. We can factor out what's common between these two terms, which in this case is a negative 3x, leaving us with 4x minus 32. So setting that equal to 0 and solving, we get two solutions, x equals 0 and x equals 32 over 4, or 8. So we have two partition numbers to consider. And again, we need to make sure we look at constructing this sign chart, because simply finding those values doesn't guarantee that concavity will change. And without constructing the sign chart, we don't know whether the function is concave up or concave down for those different values. So choosing some test points, like negative 1, 1, and 9, we can evaluate the second derivative at those different points. So our second derivative function evaluated at negative 1 will give us negative 108. So we're getting negative results there. The second derivative function evaluated at 1 will give us a positive 84. So concavity is up between 0 and 8. And evaluating the second derivative function at 9 is going to give us negative 108 again. So we get concave down. So we can say that our function is concave up on the interval from 0 to 8. Our function is concave down on negative infinity to 0, union 8 to infinity. So there's two intervals where we have negative results for the second derivative. And then we have inflection points anywhere concavity changes. So at 0, concavity changes from negative to positive, And at 8, it changes from positive to negative, making both x equals 0 and x equals 8 inflection points for this problem. So in example 7, we'll start again by finding the first derivative, which in this case will be 20 e to the x minus e. In this case, we have a composite function. So it'll be the derivative of e to the 2x, which is e to the 2x, times the derivative of that interior function, which will give us 20 e to the x minus the derivative of 2x will be 2 e to the 2x. So to get the second derivative, we'll need to apply the chain rule again. The first derivative will be simple again. That will just be 20 e to the x. But then we get minus 2 e to the 2x is that interior function times the derivative of 2x. So again, applying the chain rule there gives us 20 e to the x minus 4 e to the 2x. Or factoring out what we have common between those terms, we can factor out 4 e to the x times 5 minus e to the x. And then we want to take that second derivative and set it equal to 0. So keeping in mind that e to the x can never equal 0 means 4 e to the x can't equal 0. So we don't have a solution to consider there. But we can consider 5 minus e to the x equals 0. So adding e to the x to both sides gives us 5 equals e to the x. So to solve for x, what we can do is take the natural log of both sides, which gives us on the left-hand side the natural log of 5. On the right-hand side, natural log and e cancel each other out leaving us with just x equals the natural log of 5. 
So in this case, we only have one partition number to consider. Natural log of 5, which is approximately 1.6, meaning as test points we can choose 0 and 2. So evaluating our second derivative at 0 would give us 16, and evaluating the second derivative at 2 would give us negative 70.6. So for values less than natural log of 5, the second derivative is positive. For values greater than natural log of 5, it's negative. So our function is going to be concave up on negative infinity to the natural log of 5 and concave down on the interval from natural log of 5 to infinity. And again, we have a point where concavity changes, in this case from concave up to concave down. So we have an inflection point at x equals the natural log of 5. 